The research that had the biggest impact on me, uh, especially during the first year or so of his life, all had to do with the biology of stress. And the person who guided me through this research uh, more than anyone else is this pediatrician in San Francisco named Nadine Burke Harris. And Nadine was particularly valuable to me as a source uh, and as a subject for a couple of reasons. First of all, she and I were kind of delving into all this research around stress physiology and neuroendocrinology at the same time. Uh, and she's a medical doctor, so she was actually ac able to explain to me what it all meant. But it was also that there was something about her personal story that I found compelling. She grew up in relative affluence, the daughter of Jamaican immigrants uh, in Silicon Valley. And she went off to medical school and then to the Harvard Graduate School uh, of Public Health. And then she came back to San Francisco and she started uh, a medical clinic, still as a pretty young woman, in the poorest neighborhood in San Francisco, a neighborhood called Bayview Hunters Point. And she was like a lot of Harvard graduates. She thought she had all the answers to every question. And in lots of ways, she did. She knew what she was doing. She, she did what you're supposed to do as an inner city pediatrician. She improved the immunization rates for her patients. She gave them the medicines they needed for their various ailments. Uh, she told them to quit drinking so much soda. And, and yet, she, she was haunted by this feeling that what was really making her patients sick were things that she could not immunize them against. That it was the stress and the trauma, the noise and the violence and the instability that surrounded them that were really doing such damage to them. And this frustration that she felt made her dive into this research to try to understand uh, what was going on in the lives of her patients. And she came up upon this thing called the ACEs study. Uh, which is this landmark study in the effect of early trauma on long, uh, in, in, in lives of adults, especially in the, the health outcomes for adults. And it looked at, at adults and adults who had experienced significant amounts of trauma in childhood, according to the ACEs study, have cancer and heart disease rates that are twice as high uh, as people who didn't experience that kind of trauma. They have emphysema rates that are four times as high, suicide rates that are 12 times as high. And what we've come to understand is that the mechanism behind this effect is stress. There are a lot of important systems being developed uh, in children, especially in those early years of life. But one of the most important, and until recently one of the least understood, is the stress response system. So every infant experiences stress. A baby gets sad or scared or lonely or tired and she cries and wails and then she gets comforted and soothed and she calms down. And for most kids this is a, a actually a positive experience. The stress response system is like a muscle in many ways and it needs that kind of exercise in order to develop. The problem is that when kids are growing up surrounded by the kind of disadvantage that Nadine Burke Harris's patients were facing, when they're surrounded by stress that is chronic and intense, what doctors call toxic stress, that does not build up their stress response system at all. In fact, uh, it, it debilitates it, it damages it. And that damage gets under our skin and it can last a lifetime. It has effects on our physical health, on our mental health, and for kids it has the, the, an effect on the development of this crucial set of attention and concentration skills that matter so much in school, from the first day of kindergarten all the way through the last day of university. 